We are here in Denver, Colorado. We're covering CPAC Colorado with the president of the NRA, David Keene. Mr. Keene, good to see you, sir. It's good to be with you. Let's talk about the debate, uh, Mitt Romney, Barack Obama, who won and why? Well, I think it's clear Mitt Romney won the debate. Uh, he took it to uh, Barack Obama. And most importantly, this was the first time that a lot of people who are now focusing on the election had a chance to see Mitt Romney on his own terms, not just contrasted with Barack Obama, which was a good contrast, but they were able to see him without going through the, the screen of millions of dollars of uh, attack ads from the Obama campaign, and it worked. Virtually every instant poll and every reporter that's been involved uh, has said that the winner by a clear margin was Mitt Romney. It's going to be tough, I think, for the president. He'll come back. Uh, he's going to he's going to come back because he's going to be tougher in the next debate. But the next debate's on foreign policy, where, first of all, he doesn't have a very good record. And secondly, it's difficult for a president to really be too political on that kind of a, in that kind of a, of, of a format. So he's going to have a, a tough time, and he's also going to have to overcome the fact that now Romney's been introduced as a human being to a lot of voters, and he's not going to be able to cancel that out. So I think Romney did himself a lot of good in, in a race that was already uh, very, very close. Back in uh, 2008, when uh, Obama debated John McCain and won it, won that debate by actually a lesser margin than most of the polls give Romney in this one, he immediately gained about three points in the national polls. I would expect that uh, Romney will gain three or four points in the next couple of days, which in a lot of battleground states means he's going to either pull ahead or be even, uh, so that if he performs well from this point on, he's got a very good chance of winning. You're an old hand at this. You've been in this game for a long time. Um, if you were Mitt Romney and you were his advisors, how would you advise him to uh, act and conduct himself in the second debate? Just as he is. Uh, he's, he looked presidential. He looked like he was in charge. He didn't let the president of the United States intimidate him. And you know, I, to, to give uh, Barack Obama his due, incumbent presidents often do badly in their first debate for a couple of reasons. First of all, for the, for the previous four years, nobody's ever confronted him on anything. The only thing a president gets is a bunch of people saying, you're doing a great job, sir. Well, and the media with this president, too. Right. So if, if they're fully bought in. That's right. Everybody <laughs> says you're wonderful. Uh, you're the best thing since sliced bread. And then when you get up there and somebody actually questions you, uh, you don't know quite how to handle it. You could see that in Obama's demeanor. He's thin-skinned anyway. And he was looking at Romney like, what right do you have to be on this stage questioning me? I'm the chosen one. Uh, and so he's going to come back from that. But as I say, it's going to be difficult for him to make it all the way back. Let's talk about uh, NRA voters uh, in particular. On Thursday, the NRA came out and officially endorsed uh, Mitt Romney and, and, and Paul Ryan as, uh, you know, endorsed their candidacy. What does that mean for them and what does that mean for Second Amendment supporters? Well, it means a good deal for both because to the extent that there were any questions about the Romney-Ryan ticket and their view to the Second Amendment, I think that their faith in the NRA removes those doubts. I don't think there should have been any doubts uh, because these guys have been solid on our issues right, right along. Uh, but it does do that. It also allows us to go out specifically to gun-friendly voters and urge them to vote for this ticket rather than simply talking in generalities. Uh, I think our members and I think uh, gun owners around the country know that defeating Barack Obama is essential to preserving our Second Amendment rights, but now they can go to the polls knowing not only that they have to vote against an incumbent president, but they can do so knowing that the team they're going to elect uh, by doing that is one that's going to protect their rights and in fact enhance them. You know, Dave, we talk about uh, Barack Obama and uh, the Supreme Court justices that he would appoint. But lately, it seems like the Obama administration has been uh, waging a, a war on the First Amendment. And, you know, NRA is very big Second Amendment supporters. But talk about the defense of the First Amendment as well. Well, I, I find it in incredible uh, that the administration has taken the position that it's taken, which is essentially the U.N. position. Uh, and it's very similar to the position that anti-gun people take relative to the Second Amendment, and that is that free speech is a privilege. In fact, the uh, United Nations says free speech is a privilege granted uh, by the United Nations, and that some countries recognize it and some don't, and the, the Obama administration is basically saying the same thing. That's what they've said about gun ownership. It's not a right, it's a privilege, which we will grant to some who use it responsibly, and in the First Amendment case, we'll grant it to some who use it responsibly, which means who say the things that we like them to say. Uh, so I think that uh, this is an administration 
which frankly in American history has shown more disregard for constitutional safeguards than uh, one would ever have expected. Liberals historically have been defenders of the First Amendment uh, and the First Amendment was written to protect political speech. Uh, they've, uh, they've, and it's been used of course to protect all kinds of other things like pornography and the, and the like. And the reason it protects those things is because it's hard to draw a line, particularly in the area of satire, between core political speech and speech that's not political. Liberals have wanted to keep the protection of things that it wasn't really meant to protect and destroy its protection of core political speech, both in terms of finance reform in this country on elections uh, and now in terms of let's not offend our enemies, let's not offend anyone around the world. And, and you, you can see them moving toward a sort of speech code like you get on some college campuses where certain things are not to be discussed. I think that, the, I think that their disdain for something that they've historically said is, is important reflects and is on, on their disdain for the Second Amendment. I think that this is an administration that believes people should believe as they do and act as they want them to. And to the extent that people don't do that, constitutional guarantees aren't really meant to protect those people. Last question, David. We're here. It's uh, sponsored by the American Conservative Union, a, a group you used to be the head of. Uh, the, co the conventional wisdom was that uh, Mitt Romney didn't make his sale to conservatives and to people on the far right. But the reaction he got today and after his response last night, his, his, his performance last night, do you think that he's finally coalesced the entire base? Oh, I think so. I think the, the polls have shown for some time that the conservative base of the party is pretty united behind this ticket, even before the selection of Paul Ryan. But what the Ryan selection did, and more, what Romney's performance last night did, was give those troops that he's got on the ground, the conservatives in the, in the Republican base, the idea that this is something that they really have to go out and fight for. This is not just something that's acceptable. It's not just an acceptable alternative to Barack Obama, but this is something that's a positive good. And I think what he's done is he's, he's really, and you could see that in the crowd this morning, uh, that's not the same reception he'd have gotten a year ago or six months ago or three months ago. This was a crowd that was ready to go out and do whatever they have to do to make sure that he wins in November. David Keene, NRA president. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Thank you.